Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition's top stories Invest St. Lucia promotes economic progress through land development. New sporting facilities are months away for residents of Miku and consumers to receive refunds for recalled coconut oil. Invest St. Lucia has officially cut the ribbon at its prized Beauchamp land development in Miku. The project forms part of the agency's goal of creating 600 new landowners in various communities. Invest St. Lucia has been looking into developments that explore options such as multifamily offerings in which persons can purchase the unit within a duplex or an apartment complex at a lower reasonable cost. This includes the Beauchamp land development, which has been designated for both residential and commercial use. Lisa Joseph reports on the ribbon cutting, which took place on Thursday, September 10th. Invest St. Lucia, the ISL, has launched the Beauchamp development in keeping with its mandate to utilize state assets to create attractive and accessible opportunities for St. Lucians to become landowners. The Bonchon Land Development Project is 80% sold and comprises lots ranging from 4 to 12,000 square feet. Roderick Sherry is the Chief Executive Officer of Invest St. Lucia. This Bonchon Development comprises 59 fully serviced lots and they are a combination of residential and some commercial property. The sizes range from 4,000 to 12,000 square feet and they are reasonably priced at $12 a square foot. A land development like this is crucial to Miku's growth and development as a self-sustaining community. Home and business construction helps to generate more jobs that are community-based. It can also have a trickle-down effect on other industries such as retail, manufacturing, agriculture, and the services sector, thereby bringing economic stability to communities. This can have a direct and positive impact on the lives of our citizens. The Bosha project was announced by the ISL along with a number of residential and commercial land developments. However, the onset of COVID-19 delayed plans. But this has not deterred us. In fact, the challenges posed by the pandemic have made ISL even more determined than ever to push on. This is because it has underscored the importance of St. Lucian's owning property assets, including a home, which is much better than having to deal with the uncertainties of living in rented accommodation or squatting on untitled lands. This proves that our decision to put more St. Lucians on the path to land and home ownership was a right one, and it was very timely. Mr. Sherry says government and the ISL are working towards diversifying the local economic landscape and reducing poverty. And such projects are designed to create new neighborhoods away from the congested north of the island. Prime Minister and Parliamentary Representative for Miko South, Honorable Alan Chastney, says the constituency is ripe for this new development thrust. To facilitate this, there have been upgrades to the water supply and distribution network and further investments in facilities and infrastructure. We're opening up very soon a new water park um, for the kids, which will include swings and slides um, and a canteen and a recreational area for adults, as well as a, a water park uh, feature. Um, we are fixing up the football field in Deriso and putting an AstroTurf facility and just not too far from here, in the Miku, near the Miku Secondary School, we're also putting in an AstroTurf um, football facility in that location. And why is that important? Because we recognize that Miku South is becoming uh, a suburb, a suburb to, to View Fort. And while we may not have as much economic output that we used to have here, I think that persons who are going to be moving to the South, and yes, you did hear me right, persons who would be moving to the south from the north, and that is already starting. Um, we're hoping that they're going to choose Miku South as their choice destination. Prime Minister Chastney says the time has come for St. Lucia to benefit from a more thriving construction sector where contractors are better empowered. So when we came in as a government, we had to figure out a mechanism as to how to develop these kinds of investments without overburdening the state. And so the, month, the land was already in Invest St. Lucia, and Invest St. Lucia was able to identify a contractor that was willing to come in and put down the facilities. Government supported it by providing incentives um, to that contractor to be able to lay down the infrastructure. And then as the lots are sold, 
both Invest in Lucia and the contractor now are reimbursed. We've also added now an additional incentive. And that additional incentive is if a contractor from this constituency or in the neighboring constituencies has the capacity to go out and convince five of the new landowners to build and gives them a design of a house and is able to get five other um, homeowners to agree to join in, government will give that contractor incentives. Invest St. Lucia is spearheading similar projects in Bajoli Miku and Lafak Chozel. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. And meanwhile, rehabilitation works on the sporting facilities in the Miku area are nearing completion. We have Ryan O'Brien from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports with the details. Another two playing fields under the National Sports Infrastructure Program are into the final phase of their rehabilitation, with completion estimated to be within a couple of months. Construction manager Dominic Matra says the turf for fields at Miku and Deriso will be laid once a leveling machine currently in operation at the Sufre Mini Stadium becomes available. Presently, Miku is only ready to take the final grid with a lay of small stones. We are all drainage and everything is in place and the turf. So we are hoping that is after that is we have done Sufre, in, which we will be starting around the 10th of September, we will be moving to Deriso and therefore to Miku to do that turf area. So therefore, this will be the Miku playing field. Also, you see that if we have done what we call the fencing, and we're on the last stage of the fencing of the Miku playing field. So therefore, everything is going well with the, with the project, and therefore we are hoping that is we will get to the end by the end of October. We're going to have a swimming pool, we're going to have the reformation of basketball court, and, and also multiple centers. We also have produced what we call a, a five-a-size sand playing field at our back, so therefore we, all, we have all of these facilities around. And as we put those things, we are going now to look at the stands and what kind of seats we are going to put in. Work on the Deriso playing field is at a similar stage. And Matre was quick to point out that there will be a special cooling system that will regulate the temperature of the field. People are saying that the field gets hot, but we have actually added new technology to, that, to, that, to, the, to the turf. A cooling system that will be coming in with the field to regulate temperatures as the temperature rises. It will release moisture to cool down the field. But this is a dairy so field. It has gone through the system. It is ready to receive the turf now, as you could look at it. It is final. The final grading has been done. And therefore, we expect that that is by in the next three weeks' time, that the turf will be on, the, on that field. But also, on that field also, that program, we also we are refurbishing the, the multiple court which we have up there. That is, we are going to resurface it, put new lighting, and so on. We have also we are also created a small fiber side field on the side here, which we're going to have. But also we have fencing going on. So if you look carefully at what we have, at the back we have what called the retaining wall being fixed. According to Matre, the dimensions of the Deriso playing field have been extended to provide a minimum FIFA size football surface. It will be the main field in the community. Phase two of the project will provide changing room facilities for players and portable seating will be installed to accommodate spectators. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. Health authorities are calling on all members of society to play a part in suicide prevention. More in this report from Fresnel Neptune. As part of observing World Suicide Prevention Day on September 10th, the Ministry of Health hosted a Suicide Awareness Symposium at the St. Lucia National Mental Wellness Center. The symposium provided an opportunity for mental health professionals to share ideas and knowledge to help achieve the goal of preventing suicidal behavior. Principal Nursing Officer Glenda Sipal says, everyone can make a difference to assist others who have reached the point of wanting to end their lives. Preventing suicide is often possible and you are a key player in its prevention. You can make a difference as a member of society, as a child, as a parent, as a friend, as a colleague, or as a neighbor. You can raise awareness about the issue, educate yourself and others about the causes of suicide and warning signs for suicide. 
Show compassion and care for those who are in distress in your community. Question the stigma associated with suicide, suicidal behavior, and mental health problems, and share your own experiences. CPAL also called for the collaborative efforts of every one of us to prevent suicide. We must endeavor to develop evidence-based suicide prevention activities that reach those who are struggling in every part of the world. Joining together is critical in preventing suicide. Preventing suicide requires the efforts of many. It takes family, friends, co-workers, community members, educators, religious leaders, healthcare professionals, political officials, and governments. Suicide prevention requires integrative strategies that encompass work at the individual, systems, and community level. World Suicide Prevention Day is observed under the theme, Working Together to Prevent Suicide. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fidel Neptune. After rave reviews of the first Outreach Poetry Live episode aired last Sunday, Cultural Development Foundation Director Drenia Frederick has been speaking on the refreshing and captivating elements of the production that feature not only female St. Lucian poets, but also the essence of Castries City and its artistic influence. The next Poetry Live, Voices of the Underground episode, will be aired live on Sunday, 13th September 2020. We have details in this report from Rajavara Lawrence. Poet and playwright Catherine Atkinson will take the outreach stage this weekend in another spellbinding episode of Poetry Live, Voices of the Underground. This 30-minute program is the second of a series as part of the ongoing National Arts Festival. Atkinson gives a glimpse of what viewers can expect on Sunday night. So one piece is a, a, a suite of poems called Tomas, which are a reflection on the landscape um, and the experience mm -hmm. of, of Hurricane Tomas. 2010. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, oh gosh, was it that long ago? Yes. My goodness. Um, and then another piece is also landscape inspired. It is called, um, uh, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> but it's it's that's about okay. um, it's about uh, sort of the Easter season and the Kaoem sort of oh, nice, landscape, nice. and uh, and the and the, the the narrator or the speaker in the poem is um, you know is is cooking um, her, her Good the Friday mm -hmm. um, meal. And then another piece, which is a little bit more personal, um, is. Uh, just a reflection on, on identity and connection, again, to the landscape and the culture. After the betrayal, the quiet pain of disbelief. And in the void, a heavy, wet silence. Everywhere, everything bore the marks. Atkinson is also author of Requiem for a Bad John, a place set in an inner city community in Castries. Popularized in 2017, the play was performed to sold-out audiences at the National Cultural Center. The Cultural Development Foundation has been deliberate in casting only female poets in this Voice of the Underground series. Director of Events and Production is Drenia Frederick. Within our sort of um, anthology of literature, there has always seemed to be a highlight of the male counterparts. Um, mm. I, I just throw a few names out there and everybody knows Walcott, Lee, O.G. And you have these women who are writing and the work is just as formidable. Um, you have new writers as well. And we felt that let's do this first series highlighting six dynamic St. Lucian poets. And let's do it spanning several generations. So if you notice um, Gina, is of that younger ilk bothering on millennia mm -hmm. and then gradually it builds so you have this pan to show that this sort of rich element of literary work done by women in St. Lucia. The Poetry Live series also features various aspects of St. Lucia's capital and influence from many local writers. This is captured in the theme Voices of the Underground. When we walk around any major place in the world where art 
and something revolutionary in art, in music, in, in drama, in theater has developed. It has come out of a sort of an urban context. Mm -hmm. Uh, roughness of the city. If we look at steel pan, where did that develop? It didn't yeah. come from some highfalutin area. Um, so within that sense, that sense of castries, people see castries as rugged, people are moving around as commerce, but that city has a sound. Mm -hmm. And it is also the voice of these artists that are coming out of it. The new episode of Poetry Live, Voices of the Underground, will air at 7 p.m. Sunday night on NTN, HDS, and Calabash TV channels. From the Government Information Service, Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. The Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development, and Consumer Affairs informs the public that on September 8, 2020, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards issued a release to the public on the withdrawal of batches of real refined coconut oil and magic refined coconut oil. The batches that have been deemed non-compliant with the Compulsory National Standard SLNS 25 2017 specification for coconut oil are as follows. Real refined coconut oil BN037, BN039 and BN040. Magic refined coconut oil BN030, BN036, BN037 and BN040. Consumers or small businesses that have purchased these products from the above-mentioned batches are asked to stop using the products immediately and return them with your receipt where applicable to the retailer or wholesaler where the purchase was made for a full refund. Please note that the refund is on partially used or unopened bottles. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle. them loose the anxieties the worries open up to possibilities accept the uncertainties and cut them loose the bitterness the hopelessness plant a seed of hope in your mind it will grow and flourish in time Hold on a little longer. Life encourages you to grow. You have so much to offer. Look, tomorrow is waiting to say hello. Don't give up on yourself. Instead, reach out for help. Perhaps it's time to reach out to someone. Call the Health Helpline 203 toll-free anytime to speak to a professional. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle A Creole. Merci au temps, Jesse. Merci, Madame, Department of Universe Consabilité, pour information en gouvernement cette ci GIS, et Télévision Nationale, via NTN, Capositeur Nouvelle A Creole, Présenteur. Primus Hutchinson. Les plus grands citoyens et yo qui plénibrisé en pays là, quand vous voyez un grand soulagement en bas programme assistance gouvernement pour aider public là généralement. Ça vient venu possible par pays India et organisation des affaires mangées mondiales WFO programme ça là qui public là connaît primaire quand l'argent les pauvres c'est une assistance que gouvernement cabaye tous les mois. Mais tous les mois, pour aider les plus gros citoyens qui passent à travailler encore, les enfants qui parlent pas de parents pour occuper eux, qui sont déshabillés, et les gens qui sont souffert, puis ils sont avec l'autre, comme ça. Durant une cérémonie en studio GIS NTN jeudi, les représentants du gouvernement, cette fois-ci, ont semblé pour essayer à ce moment là qui fait principalement comme pays à a continué la bataille pour abattre la maladie de Corona. Le ministre des Affaires et Développement Économique, Honorable Guy Joseph, expliquer valait l'avantage économique ça qu'elle porter pour cette ci nous tenir 2600 moun à sous liste moun qui ka joindre assistant from gouvernement donc ça a augmenté liste là par 1000 ce qui a aller pour 3600 moun ça ka prend place en bas ministre en bas ministre Equity, qui est le ministre de tout le responsabilité pour 
e ki o ka gade la o sini lot moun ki ka jwen a ti um, la jas ou sa yo te ka jwen moun ki ka vive ek ed ek dife wan moun dat yo ken de so sa nou ka fe se nou ka really we mestie gouvernman indie pou um, la jas sa yo jabay la pou sa yon de situasyon se pa pou tout tan yo bay la jas se pou 6 mwa me sa ka yon an bon soulajman konon a situasyon COVID la pou se famye ki bouzou rasistan sa. Bien souvaman, le yon dezas naturel, ebe pies lot situasyon trakasman ki ka afekte yon peyi. Se pli gwan situasyon, pli souvaman se yo ki ka pwe plok. Menez de sa fe egalite, jesti sosyal, e gouvernman lokal, onan ab len ab mon tout, di ki gouvernman te ja deside pou servi a dan la jan ki te an plas pou adresi lot nesesite pou ende pito yo ki plini bizen an peyi ya. Alo, asistans India ek WFO se yon ke apote gwan sou lajman. Hodi ya, nou te ka siye an agwiman kote lajman sou la kaya le pou ede jan ki an lel lis le pov, pou ede jan ki vye, ki mamay ki ni disabilite, pou ede moun ki ka viv avek HIV, AIDS, avek osi pou ou moun ki an profite. Bon, kon ou jatan, lani 206 mil moun, 600 moun ki asou lis la, nou ka augmente lis la pou 3600, avek osi bien, nou ka mette anti la vien le lajan, nou ka bay se moun an ki, se moun an la ka viv avek disabilite, se moun an ki ni HIV, avek moun ki an laj, se moun lajan yon ka hen, nou ka augmente yon, nou ka mette anti la vien le lajan. So nou ka servi de l'ajan sa pou rezon sa la. Sa se an tout 700 mil dola Amerikan. Avek mwen ka mwen mesye World Food Program avek gouvernman India pou don nechan sa la paske i ka ban nou abote ed pou mette nou an domen e pozisyon pou ede se moun an ki ni bisme an set li si. Li ou mou ka 27 de maladi korona ja wetoune an peyi. Madeli 8 septem 2020, se li si te registre yon ka 9 de malade korona, individe a se te yon nom 27 lane de laj, ki te antwe an se li si dimanj li 6 septem. Me kwe di li 9 septem, gouvernman se li si te vwe etwa je sal avi yo an peyi, ta se an Amerik pa avi yon prive. A sou investigasyon, dipatman sa te, pou te dekove si individe a te ni kontak epi lot moun, mou twe wis la te twe ba. Ek sa si paski menajman hotel la kote elevide a te ka reste pe asire ki tout protokol te a plas ek sa proteje le travaye pou touve espoze pou danje maladi korona sa la kote elevide a. Pa mise de mach la ki te asiste pou identifye a se bonè ek menaje ka de korona se pou teste moun le yo ka debache a sou eropoa. Ek se les autorite sa te si yo pa satisfe epi wezolta test ki sa ki pasaje a haprezante. La ose ni fason pou identifye a se bonè de setrojez ki ni teste ou pozitif pou asiwe ki tout le setrojez obeyi se protokol ki a plas. Ek pou fe asiwe ki les ofisye trouve tout moun ki te ni kontak epi yon etrojez ki debatye a se tresye. Ministre de Sante ka kontinue pou fe investigasyon konsene ki tout moun ki te ni kontak epi yon evidye a trouve teste ek yon ka kontinue travay epi menajman hotel la pou asiwe ki tout wèk a plas pou sanitize, pou edwye asou posibilite korona si ma ouje, pat ma sate ka konsey publik la pou kontinue swip tout se protokol la ki a plas, sevi ma sa soufi jay chen sis pe distans, hod yon alon. Wezidan an komen bouchan an fasad soud mikou, ja trouve l'okazyon pou ni yon mwa sote wè ki sa yo menm, an menm fason kon ou chok ek chwazey. Le wezidan ek plis toujou le jenes a komen sa la, a prezan ni oportunite pou ni yon tewen pou bati kayo. Ankou wako, Invest Saint Louche ek gouvernman set le si, kontune inisyatif pou prezate l'okazyon pou le sitwayen pe ya okupe pou yo ek la fami yo anti mwaso a set le si. Chèman pou konsit soud mikou wende mon chéri ka wè gwan signifikas ek benefis pou je sa la. Chonje isi a se te on plas ki te abandonen, se te on chay pie bwa, on chay zeb ki te la. Epi gouvernman, throw invest sent lo cha, develop le plas la. Yo mette chime, yo mette kouan, yo mette dlo, 
et puis monter sa vini et gagner terrain là et ces terrains ça ça aide yo en différentes manières yo ça aller en banque là yo ça des banques là moi veulent aller l'école moi veulent voyager moi l'école moi veulent faire un cai mais moi n'ai aucun terrain moi ça au fait pour sécurité selon mon chéri au juste à la cai aider en l'eau moun en commun là on chai moun en place ça c'est on les tel la famille nous que ca été sur nous pas ça les pièces côté et puis ça mais à présent ça là il y a en haut 50 moun qui ni morceau terre ici a yo acheté et puis c'est un bail yo ça dit that you have accompli en la vie um, pour l'âge yo et pour um, moi je veux dire um, nous ca souhaiter nous ca oui merci investissement de l'ocher gouvernement pour projet ça parce que c'est un projet qui était très bon et puis tout moun a qui acheté terre um, content ça a un investissement qui fait ici. Plusieurs officiers du gouvernement et le ministre du gouvernement ont adressé ce manière en parmi eux c'était le premier ministre, honorable Alain Chastney, qui aussi est représentatif pour ces paroles à ce micro. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle là, je vous remercie pour regarder mon cabinet d'invitation. Je ne peux pas encore dire que vous avez la vie, vous avez posé toutes les nouvelles à Coyol. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement de semaine. Merci à Peel Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or the YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now. Goodbye.